Hey there and welcome, my name is Pete and today we complete Mass Effect. Oh boy, I've been waiting for this. The game is so massively popular I doubt it needs an introduction, so let's get right to it. Uh, by the way, the background picture was made by the very talented Justin Davis, I'll link to his portfolio below. And now on to the question what this completionist playthrough will include. First off, we'll do all missions and assignments, visit all planets and collect all background information in the form of codex entries. Most of the codex entries will come naturally by exploring all dialogue options. For a select few we'll have to dig a bit, but all in all it's absolutely feasible to get all of them in one playthrough. We'll also collect all med gel and grenade upgrades as well as all weapon and armory license and to add to the challenge we're also going to play on the hardest difficulty setting which is insanity. And now let's quickly talk achievements. Mass Effect is kind of special in this regard and the biggest problem I have with achievements in Mass Effect is that you would need at least 3 playthroughs to get all of them. Now since I do want to play other games on this channel in the near future, I'll just focus on what's available in one go and leave it at that. And now let's jump right into it and we'll begin with character creation. Welcome to so let's start a brand new save file. Level 1, the Classified male default Commander Shepard. No customization whatsoever, we'll just play with what the game connection. gives us at this point. That secure also means Shepard's class will be soldier and his background will be earthborn soul survivor, which has some minor influences Please on a few points in the game and dictates the amount of paragon and renegade Both points we'll start with. These points are basically the measurement of how good versus how evil you behave in the game and we'll collect a few of them on both sides. And here you see it, Insanity Difficulty, Auto Level Up is off, Target Assist is as low as possible and Squad Power Usage is disabled. I've also turned on subtitles and uh, let's get started. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets, learned to look out for himself. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it... Mass Effect. And with that, the story of Commander Shepard begins on the Normandy. The Arcturus Prime relays in range, initiating transmission sequence. Commander? We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. Relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Board is green. Approach run has begun. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. 
Okay, let's do this. Quick disclaimer, this first part will include a ton of dialogue, which means I won't be talking that much. That will get better as the game progresses. Now we'll start as Commander Shepard on the Normandy, we have an interesting guest on board it seems, and we're on our way to some kind of mission which looks to be a bit more than what we've been told. Mass Effect's dialogue system gives us a few options here, and to get the first of the aforementioned Paragon points, we're going to agree with Joker, yes, something about this mission seems fishy. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting on. Joker! Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Yep, got it. I'm on my way. Is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. So we got Paragon points and also a few codex entries, which also grant experience points. To get some more, let's talk to Navigator Presley. And we're getting dragged right along with him. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander, just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. Okay, Presley, what do you think is going on? You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre? A Turian Spectre on a shakedown run. It doesn't add up. Mass Effect rule number one, always explore the left dialogue tree. To start, let's ask about Nihilus. You don't trust Nihilus? I don't like Turians in general, it runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war, lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. A bit prejudiced, aren't we? That was 30 years ago, you can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board, especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. So with a Spectre on board, what's so special about those stealth systems we're testing? What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors, cutting-edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. Well, I agree, but for what? For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. And now, just because we can, let's accuse him of not trusting the captain. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. Well then, I guess we have to find out what. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. We have now unlocked the codex entries for the first contact war and starship no, sensors. And now let's talk to Dr. Chakras and Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. That's some free Paragon points here. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool, even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Oh, you'll do fine. I'm so sure of it. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. 
Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coups. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. Yeah, you better not. Um, let's ask them about Nihilus first. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. For Spectres here, we get a Codex entry. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those C-Sec grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the Council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. You're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds. Just like you on a coup. Oh, Jenkins. Fifty Marines died there, Jenkins. Sorry, Commander. I, I didn't mean to offend you. I, I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? Yes, actually, one more thing. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. But there's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Oh, me neither, Jenkins. Me neither. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. So now it looks like we're about to get some answers on what's really going on here. So let's talk to our Spectre guest, Nihilus. Commander Shepard. I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. Um, I expected somebody else. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. Well, yeah, uh, might be. I've never been there. But you know of it. It's become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Oh really, Nihilus, is it? I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Uh, yes, I actually think that is something we should have been told. I don't like being kept in the dark, Captain. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. 
We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Okay, so why involve the Council at all? Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The Beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate Well, you. why is the obvious question here. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Alright, our good soldier Shepard obviously wants to know more about the world we're landing on. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species, and after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. So what's so special about this beacon? Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology. Even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. And asking about the Protheans gives us a codex entry. What do you know here. about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society. And without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great... Alright then, I think we bothered these two enough. Let's head down there, shall we? Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden... Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Out after that, no calm traffic at all. Just goes dead. 
There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly, without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Yeah, Shepard really seems to be looking forward to dealing with whatever that is. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Okay, no reason not to trust him so far. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! Thank you, Anderson. We are approaching drop point two. Okay, that's it for this episode. Next time we'll touch down on Eden Prime, we'll have some combat and we'll do some leveling. You can click the video on screen to go straight to the next part. And of course, you also have the opportunity to subscribe. That's it for now. I'll see you next time. Cheers.